Do you like animals? Do you like work? Well, you're gonna love this. Welcome to Animals at Work. <laughs> All over the planet, there are millions of animals that have jobs. <laughs> this is the show that brings you the funniest, coolest, and most bizarre animals at work. Don't go anywhere. It's going to be fabulous. Coming up, three brave school kids face their worst fear. <gasps> A rebellious parrot causes some trouble. <laughs> And Marvin the Mouse has a little accident. Uh, he didn't do this. But now it's showtime. Everybody, welcome to the show. I am so excited because I'm about to have my first driving lesson in a tractor! <laughs> a lot of people are terrified of driving, but not me. Ah! Hey, John! I'm your driving instructor. Ready to go? <sighs> now I'm starting to feel a little chicken. First, we're off to the darling little town of Darlington in the UK. This leggy lady is Maria. Maria is a phobia counselor. She helps people get over their fear of spiders. She works with reptile and spider expert, Jay. Well, this is Maria, and Maria is a Chilean rose tarantula, and she's one of my creepy, crawly counselors. Fear of spiders is called arachnophobia, and over 1.8 million people in the UK suffer seriously from it. That's no fun for anyone. A phobia can just put a restriction on somebody's life. It can stop them doing something. For example, they might not be able to go on holiday because they're scared that they might bump into a big spider. So that's where Maria try and explain the nice things about spiders and to try and get people over their fears and phobias. This eight-leg counselor is very young to have such an important job. She's about four years old now, but that's not that old, really. She could live till she's about 30. But Maria is very mature for her age, and her calm temperament makes her a natural counselor. What's good about Maria is she's a very, very placid spider. I always refer to them a bit like the golden Labrador of the tarantula world, really. Maria puts her calm nature to good use, working hard all over the country, letting people with arachnophobia hold her so they can see how lovely spiders can be. We go on a lot of phobia um, sessions, as I call them. And Maria is right to try to teach people that spiders aren't so bad. For example, there are 40,000 types of spider on the planet, and only 30 of those are venomous enough to kill a human. And none of those breeds is native to the UK. Maria herself is a Chilean rose tarantula and comes from Chile in South America. And she's not the only overseas employee who works for Jay. Well, apart from Maria here, um, I've got lots of other animals that I take out to deal with phobias, and things like snakes, giant cockroaches, scorpions. That's right, Jay employs lots of animals from all over the world who come to the UK to help us overcome our fears. Each of these caring creatures specializes in curing people of a particular fear, be it ophophobia, musophobia, or entomophobia. Hang on. What's that noise? Hello? It's the phobia phone! Oh, hi, Miss Aitken. How are you? Someone must have a fear they want yeah. cured. OK, I think I've got um, just the person to help you out. Someone must have a fear they want curing. And it looks like Maria's the lady for the job. The head teacher of a local school has three students who want to overcome their fear of spiders. Maria's job's really important today because the people who I'm going to be helping, um, some of them are very young and they've got their whole life ahead of them. It's so important Maria is going to need some help. Jay and Maria want to take a household spider along with them to meet the kids as well. But this means Jay will have to catch one. Gonna go down there. Don't go. Don't leave us. Oh, he's gone in there. You might be scared of them, but household spiders are actually a good thing to have in your house. In the same way a pet cat keeps away mice, spiders keep away harmful pests such as flies and moths. Hopefully the kids will learn that today. 
If Jay ever catches one. There we go. There he is. It's business time. The team's assembled. Maria is ready. Come on then, Maria. We've got work to do. It's time to head to the local school and cure some phobias. It's all in a day's work for this expert team of creepy crawly counselors. Coming up. At the end of this, we're going to be able to get everybody to hold a tarantula. Will the kids be cured? Find out later. We've searched the internet for your clips of what animals get up to on their days off. Check out this pup who's stuck in a rut. Oh, man. I'm in a rhino pickle. All right, ready, all set, go. Oh, yeah. Oh, roll over, baby. Come on, get off my back. That was only a practice goal. I, 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 just, I just give in. Just bring me the ball, would you? Come on. But now those kids who love animals, it's the... Animals, yeesh! Let's meet the Fanimals, our animal detectives. Yaya, Abigail, and Tarek. Today, the Fanimals will be trying to find a job for... Marvin the Mouse. Don't like mice. Oh, come on, Fanimals, mice are nice. Say hello to Marvin. Hi, Marvin. He's so cute now that you see him. Yes, he is cute, but Marvin is also sad. Okay, okay, he's not that sad. He just wants to be an artist. Oh. But doesn't know how. Oh. Fanimals, can you work out what skills Marvin has that could make him an artist mouse? Hmm, the Fanimals seem a little short of ideas. Time for a brainstorm. Big whiskers. It's got a huge tail in it. Yes, mice have tails that are as long as their bodies. Their tails are covered in scales and help them balance and climb. Could this help Marvin be an artist? Someone could roll they, them in paint, paint, they roll up and then they just roll up and down the top. Everyone has different colors on their um, paws here and they all walk around. Could be a painting. <laughs> this is some good thinking, Fanimals. But do you think Marvin would be happy getting covered in paint? Yeah, yeah. Ugh, not such a good look. Any other bright ideas, Fanimals? If he wanted to do a sculpture and he wanted to get a hole in something, he could just chew through it if it was soft enough. That could work. A mouse's front teeth are growing all the time, so Marvin needs to be constantly chewing to stop them getting too long. This could help him chew his way to a mouse masterpiece. But there's something Marvin does even better than chewing. He <laughs> <laughs> didn't do 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 <laughs> I can really smell his doo-doo and wee. Yes, Marvin goes to the toilet a lot. He does about 80 poos a day. But there's a lot of wee over there. And frequently marks his territory with wee. When he's walking, that he's going through the, the wee and then he's moving it everywhere. So, Fanimals, do you think Marvin could use this skill to become the next Picasso or Winardo da Vinci? Maybe he could just flip poo and wee around. <laughs> It's a good idea. It certainly is. So how do you plan to get Marvin to move about the canvas doing his arty business? Put food in the middle, yeah, and food around so he comes there and then he could probably wee. He keeps on going into the corners to do it, so you need to kind of spread it out. Should we test this out? Yeah, I think we should. Okay, Let so the mouse good. magic begin. Yeah, First, yeah. some food. To do it like this. There, there, there. To inspire Marvin to move Ta -da! about. Then they let Marvin do what he does best. It is a lot of weird now. Go, Marvin, go! And now the canvas is covered in mousy mess. The Fanimals add dried poster paint to highlight the wet areas. Stinks of it out, or we're just gonna leave it. <sighs> that that looks really nice now. And once the paint is dry, they can shake it all off. Whoa, whoa. Leaving a very pretty pattern where Marvin's done his business. Oh, that, that is a masterpiece. So, Fanimals, what do you make of Marvin's work? It's my favorite. I love it. You can tell, really tell why he peed, like here and all the way over there. I think Marvin's the best artistic mouse in the world. And he doesn't want to stop because he's peeing on you. And he's done a pill on you. <laughs> Don't forget, Fanimals, to wash your hands. And well done. You've helped Marvin achieve his dream of becoming an artist. It's a mouse, the piece. Oh. 
Now back to the UK and the town of Darlington. Earlier, we met four-year-old Chilean Rose Tarantula Maria. Maria is a phobia counselor who today is on a tough assignment to help these kids get over their fear of spiders. There you go. And it's gonna be a tough job because these kids really don't like spiders. I just don't like the legs and how they look. If I saw a small one and the, a real small one, I would just freak out. I don't like them, I don't even don't like them being this big. I really want to be cured because I'm fed up with screaming and jumping on the sofa and looking really silly. Hang on, even the head teacher is scared of spiders? Maria, this might be your hardest job yet. You better get to work. Well, hi everybody, nice to see you all. Now, my name is Jay, I'm gonna help you out today. It's gonna be good fun. I'm gonna find out all about an animal that I think you're a little bit worried about, is that right? Yeah. <laughs> well, what all this is building up to is that at the end of this, we're going to be able to get everybody to hold a tarantula. Whoa! The kids really don't look happy. In fact, they're so scared, Jay decides to put Maria outside the room. OK, Maria, I'll see you later. It's now down to Jay to get the group warmed up. Well, I'm going to take very slow and very gentle steps. We're going to have a look at getting over our spider fear. Is that OK? Here's a spider. I'm sure that doesn't scare anybody, is that right? Jay uses toy spiders to build up the group's confidence, and some of them are pretty weird. Who's going to have a try at picking one of those up? OK, very good. Look at you. That's great. Jared, are you OK with this one as well? That's it. That's all right. That's good. Jay's so techniques are starting to pay off, problem. but he still oh. has a lot more to teach them before Maria can start her work. I really like to try and educate the children about spiders. There's lots of things that just aren't true about spiders, so I want to try and put the record straight. When they bite their prey, maybe it's a fly or something like that, they'll inject their poison. The first part of this has been really useful from going from really very genuinely scared to then beginning to relax. Let's have a little try at doing something. One leg at a time at that and kind of walk. That's just how a tarantula moves. Yeah, that's really good, everybody. That's how a tarantula moves. Jay's even showing them parts of real spiders. This is the head of a shed spider skin. Isn't that amazing? It's actually encouraged me to go to the big step doing with the real spider. The group's doing really well, and Jay decides they're finally ready for Maria to come back into the room. Okay, everybody. Well, here she is. She's in this corner here. She's just there, look. So finally the kids still don't look too sure, so Jay decides to test their still. nerves one final Can time by seeing if they can it's hold. Very impressive here, look. This. A shed, shed spider skin. skin! As spiders grow, they shed their skin to leave this hollow casing behind. But will any of these kids dare to hold one in their hand? Anyone like to have a hold of that one? You're holding one of Africa's biggest spiders there. I was the first one to touch the real spider skin when you felt it was like a feather. When I touched it, it felt funny. We can hardly feel it. Maria's really impressed with everyone's progress, but there's one member of the group who's not too keen on the spider skins. See if you can just pick this up and pop it on your hand like that. Yeah. See if you can. you can do that. That'd be really good. We really want you to do this, don't we? Yeah, we, yeah, we do. That's it. That's great. Well done. Well done Brilliant. It's great. Yeah, you did really well there. When I had it in my hand, I was feeling quite nervous because it was all dangly and hangy and stuff. Later, time's come to meet Maria. Maria comes out to play. Normal service is being interrupted as we head over to breaking news. Good evening, I'm Johnny Newsman, and this is Animal News. Tonight's top story, cow takes unexpected dip. 
An intrepid cow has made a big splash with a Buckinghamshire family after trying out their swimming pool without permission. This truly was a case of cow splat when a herd of cows roamed into a family's back garden and one decided to take a dip in the pool. Now I've heard everything. <laughs> Get it? Herd? Like a cow herd? <laughs> You guys don't laugh at anything. Anyway, let's cross over to our dog on the scene, the pooch who loves a scoop, the news hound. Hi, Johnny. The cow said he fell into the pool by accident. But to be honest, I think he should pull the other one. Get it? The other one, Johnny? <laughs> Unbelievable. That was tonight's Animal News. Thanks for watching and stay furry. <laughs> you guys are a barrel of laughs. Makeup. <laughs> now we're jetting off to San Carlos in Costa Rica. Meet Merlin, a feisty Amazonian parrot who's got the top job of headmistress at the bird sanctuary where she lives. She works alongside sanctuary manager Juan Jose. Berlin to me, it's a uh, happy bird and a very special friend in a way. The Lalapita sanctuary is home to over 100 birds, but Merlin is most definitely the boss. Buenos dias. Merlin's the baddest bird on the block, and these birds know it. He keeps everybody like, don't fight, no fights here. I'm the boss, no fight. Merlin is a blue crowned Malay Amazon parrot. She has been working hard at the sanctuary ever since it opened over 19 years ago. She is almost 30 years old. And the girl's got attitude. She's noisy. She's always got to make more noise than I do. And naughty. Normally, this type of behavior might get you fired from Hello. your job. But here, at the hey. La Lupita Sanctuary, it's exactly what Merlin's boss is looking for. The La Lupita Sanctuary takes in unwanted birds who've spent most of their lives in cages. Most of these birds, they are pets. The sanctuary tries to teach these birds to become wild and free, and this is where Merlin's rock and roll free spirit comes in. Merlin's job here is to teach other birds to be free. Even Rain can't stop this bird doing what she wants, and it's Juan Jose's hope that the other birds will copy her behavior and learn to live free and happy just like her. Free to fly anywhere she wants to go anytime she wants to. And in return, Merlin gets paid in seeds, fruit, and veg. Uh. Merlin's free nature may be a good thing for the birds at the sanctuary, but it does get her into trouble sometimes. She's a very sneaky bird. One of the main rules of the sanctuary is that no birds are allowed in the house where Juan Jose lives with his family. But Merlin's not the kind of bird to follow rules, is she? She can't leave the, a window or a door open because she just slides in. And once inside, Merlin is very good at being bad. If only all headmistresses loved trouble as much as this. Merlin doesn't just spend her time being a queen of chaos. When not teaching the other birds to be free, she has lots of other jobs to do around the sanctuary, like waking everyone up. Every morning. <laughs> she's my wake up call at five in the morning just about every day. So she's got a good job. Got to wake up the bus. And once everyone's up, Merlin can't wait to get on with her day. She loves to look after her sanctuary birds, which include making sure they all get fed. Inspection time. Merlin is checking out that everybody, all the food in here is good so her friends can eat. Merlin also likes to check on human food. I hope that's not bird stew. Hola, rico. When everyone's eaten, this busy headmistress bird even takes time to meet and greet sanctuary visitors. 
Hola. Come on, Merlin, Hola. play nice. And when her working day is over, Merlin likes nothing more than sneaking back into the house for some rock and roll singing. Well, what else would you expect from this hell raisin head mistress? It's not just today that animals have had jobs. In fact, history reveals that in the past, they've had even more amazing jobs than today. And here are those, history's heroes! These books never come out! Oh, hello there. I'm Professor John Bumbleman, and as a famous animal historian, I'm known the world over for my brain and my brawn. <laughs> well, maybe just my brain. Anyway! Throughout time, animals have used their immense strength to do the toughest of jobs. We can only gasp <laughs> in wonder at the superhero strength of working animals. So here, right here, are history's strongest heroes! Hachamimia In the old days, brave knights entered tournaments to try to win huge sums of medieval money and perhaps the hand of a fair maiden. <laughs> No event was more dangerous than the jousting competition. The sport was only for the bravest and even killed Henry II of France. But knights could barely move on their own with all the armor. They needed a big, strong and trusty horse to help them. These huge horses were strong enough to carry a big, burly knight. All his armor and his lance, his shield, and even some armor for themselves. And after all that, charge down a field to confront another knight. The winning knight got all the glory, but the true hero was his incredibly strong steed. Our next history's hero worked in 1943 at the Battle of Monte Cassino. The Allied forces were attempting to take back Rome from the Germans. Things were looking grisly as food and vital ammunition was running out. That's when Wojtek the brown bear stepped in. He carried heavy boxes filled with ammunition through heavy enemy fire, and he never dropped a single box. Wojtek and his company supplied enough provisions to keep the troops alive in order to win the battle. Whew, come on, come on, man. Strength of a bear! Oh, yeah! One, two, three! Oh, yeah. <laughs> but the accolade for the strongest working animal in history goes to... The elephant! Employed 400 years ago in India. The Shah Jahan had grand plans when he brought the elephants into work as builders. His plans were so grand, in fact, that he brought in 1,000 builder elephants. Each elephant would require 140 kilos of food in wages. That's 50 million tons of food a year for the whole lot of them. And so, well fed, they went to work. 22 years and more than a billion tons of food later, Shah Jahan's monument was built, the Taj Mahal, one of the new wonders of the world, all thanks to history's strongest working animal, the elephant. Oi, oi, here, over here, hello. <laughs> oh, sorry, I've done my back end with these weights. Mean exercise, we are history. Thanks for watching. I'll see you next time. And finally, it's back to Darlington in the UK. Maria is a four-year-old Chilean rose tarantula who specializes in curing people of their spider phobias. Today, Maria has a tough job on her hairy hands. She's trying to cure three students and a head teacher of their arachnophobia. At the end of this, we're going to be able to get everybody to hold a tarantula. So far, in the phobia session, the kids have held toy spiders and even spider skins. But will they have the courage to hold the real thing? I'm looking forward to seeing Maria. Maybe he can hold her, I don't know. I'm a bit nervous about the real spider. I'm quite nervous about the tarantula and I've got butterflies in my tummy. Well, time's come to meet Maria. 
This is the moment of truth. It's Maria's job to be calm and friendly so the kids will agree to hold her. Who would like to have a try at that? Please, don't try this at home. Remember, Maria is a professional. Shall I have a try with you then? All oh, right, good for you. Here she comes. She's going to walk down onto you, look. And she'll stop. That's it! Maria, stay perfectly it's still! Light, That's it? great counselling! Yeah. That's it. You know what to do. Just touch her. She comes around. That's right. Maria's doing an amazing job. How Even the feel, terrified okay? teacher's happy to hold her. There we are. Mm -hmm. Well, <laughs> kind of happy. Superb. Well done. That's really good. Amazing! Everyone in the group has held Maria. Everyone that is, except for Jared. Should we have a little try? Doing a bit more. Yeah. Are you okay? Jared agrees to hold Maria as long as Jade doesn't take his hand away. It's down to Maria to keep Jared calm and help him conquer his arachnophobia once and for all. And she's still. Look at how still she is. And look at you smiling. That's great. You did it. Well done. This is amazing. Marvelous Maria's got the group totally relaxed. She truly is a top counselor. I did it, and, it, and I didn't even feel anything, but it tickled. It was really soft when I stroked it, and for, so it was nice and soft and smooth. Yeah. For a final test to see if the group has conquered their arachnophobia, Maria calls on her assistant, the household spider. Before the session, the kids wouldn't have even wanted a look at this tiny spider. But how will they act now they've spent time with Maria? How do you feel about this one? How does this one make you feel? Now that I've seen Maria, it's all right. Is it? That's interesting. That's really good. Not only are the kids not scared, they actually look a bit bored by this tiny spider. So how do you think your life now, will it be better with spiders? Do you think you have to cope a bit better? Yeah, because they eat the flies. The kids were absolutely amazing. I mean, they were genuinely scared when we started, and then so relaxed at the end, and they just actually didn't want to put the spiders away. Well done, Maria. That's a great day's work. I think Maria's done a fantastic job today, and uh, she can certainly sleep well tonight, yeah. Fancy that, being afraid of spiders. <laughs> the thing we have to remember is that they're more afraid of us than we are of them. <laughs> <laughs> I like anoraks, but this is ridiculous!